Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to Oracle of Seasons! It's time to explore these crypts. Ted has made his way through the graveyard, with the help of the pirates, if you recall. And this is the second-to-last dungeon, and it's, uh, it's not too hard. I gotta say. Man, we got a lot of items. Also, the remote control boomerang, let it be known, is totally awesome. Also, I don't have my red ring. There we go. I am now a powerhouse. I should pretty much kill almost anything in one hit with this ring. And the level 2 sword combined. Be gone the fire squad. Okay, so this is the gimmick of the dungeon. You have to finish each floor before you can descend, because the ghosts won't let you do it. In order to kill the ghost, you have to find him first. Oh, killing everything in the room. Zelda, you never let me down. There we go. Hey, look at Key! Alright, well, I guess it's back to that beginning room. Yeah, we were only at it for a minute. We already had to do a jump cuts. This is going well! There we go. We've got enough hearts now. Man, look at that. Blazing through everything. Those skull guys who normally took two hits are now destroyed in just one. Ted is unstoppable. Relatively, of course. Alright, so this is how we find the ghost of the first part. We actually went through this room before, but we were down below. Anyway, lighting the torches brings him out. And I'm sure with our newly acquired sword, this should be no problem whatsoever. Yeah. Done and done. So now, when you go into that room... Hey, look, he's not blowing out any of the torches, so... We can descend. The first floor is pretty small. In fact, this dungeon overall is pretty small. Which is pretty good. For me, at least. Okay, this is... Well, we'll come back to that. I will leave those statues for another time. Alright, something has been requested since I started this, and I don't know why. You guys really want to see this, but here you go. This is what happens if you jump and there's nothing above you. Ted crushes his skull against the ceiling, most likely dying in the process. Ooh, that was not right. Of course, if he can take a fall from that high, I can see how crushing his skull against the ceiling does nothing to him. Alright, we have another key. Okay, now we can do the thing in this room. Basically, all of these statues come to life except for one, and that one that doesn't come to life is a random one. So every single time you have to search through them and find the right one. Of course, the magic boomerang, they're not really that much trouble, so... It's not really that dangerous of a puzzle, now is it? I love that thing. Between the level 2 boomerang and the red sword, with the red ring. I mean, seriously, we're a powerhouse. Anyway, a block puzzle that we're gonna speed up because watching me push things forever is no fun. Alright, so if this is your first time, trial and error will pretty much tell you to place the trampoline here because it'll lead you up here. Okay, we've got a Stolfos Knight and a Jinx. And we got a map! I also don't believe I looked at this map. I didn't look at Bill's map either. I don't know why. Anyway, this map is actually not that exciting because it's an Explorer's Crypt. It's pretty much your generic map type. Anyway, you gotta be fast here or you will miss the train! Also, to the right, we can't go there yet because we have not the item that we need. Okay, so this is a statue-moving puzzle. Each button slides the row of statues. Trial and error, if it's your first time, will tell you to do it this way. And look at that, leaving an open in the center. We'll get you a key. Time to backtrack! Alright, with the key we can make our way to the eastern exit from this room. And, uh, hey, it's another room with torches. That tells me that there's a ghost! 
These torches will go out if you're not fast enough, though, so you need the Pegasus Seeds to light them all. It's not too tough. Anyway, it brings the ghost out. The second ghost is a little bit harder than the first one, but uh, not too tough. The first one just went in straight lines with the sword. This one is going to curve and make flame paths, but one swing from the sword kills it. Go figure. Ted the Powerhouse strikes again. Also, now that we have killed that ghost, we can make our way through this room that we didn't enter. You have no time, if you don't kill the ghost, to swim to this staircase before all those torches are blown out. If the torches are blown out, I didn't mention, they send you back to the beginning of the dungeon. Oh, I can't do anything there just yet. Remember earlier when I said who would ever want to use the magnet gloves on those knights? The dark nuts? Well, here's one case where you would. It's actually the only way to kill these guys. And if you didn't know you could do that, uh, you could end up stuck in that part. I know it stumped me at first, when I very first played this game. Anyway, now that we've got the magnet gloves of ear rape, we can finish this uh, spinning magnet puzzle. But if you're crafty, you can cheat out half of it, like I just did. And we have red trampolines bringing you up one floor while re uh, I'm sorry, blue trampolines bringing you up one floor, while red trampolines will bring you up two floors. But uh, we don't want to go up two floors just yet because we needed to do that first. Anyway, see, this door wouldn't be opened if we hadn't killed those Stalfos. Oh, that looks like a dungeon treasure if I ever saw one. Nice little puzzle to get to it. Well, not really a puzzle, more of a jumping skill test. And look, we get Rock's Cape. That's the level 2 jumping item. It makes its debut here in the Oracle series. Basically, you press the jump button and hold it, you will glide. You can basically jump about, uh, I think it's three, three or four squares now with a normal jump. And a whole lot with a Pegasus jump. There we go, we can barely make it across that gap. Anyway, we need another key. So we make our way back to this room again. This time, though, we can go to the right, which you normally couldn't pass if you didn't have the cape. Even with a craftily timed Pegasus jump, I don't think you could do it. And remember how much of a pain in the ass these guys were before? Well, with the red sword and red ring, they are no problem whatsoever. One slice kills them. Problem solved. I don't know what just happened there. Anyway, I uh, did that wrong. Sometimes I remember things, sometimes I forget. But uh, you're not going to fault me for that, right? I hope not. Oh, these gloves yet again. Anyway, that gives us the key that we need, so... Uh, as you can see, this room is right here. We're going to make our way back to that block. Alright, so, let's unlock this thing. First thing we do is just wait for the tiles to finish crushing, because they can get in your way when you're trying to jump. There we go. Now, normally you can do this fancy convoluted thing, but if you're crafty with your jumps, you can make it a shortcut, like I just did. Ooh, that's very reminiscent of A Link to the Past. Anyway, making our way around, we enter the center area. I don't really understand why we're heading all the way around for that. It's kind of convoluted to me, but with the powered up ring, those guys are no problem anymore. And uh, our cape jump isn't quite going to make it over there, so we have to use the Pegasus Seeds here. But uh, as you can see, it's no problem whatsoever. But now, we're going to come up to the mini boss. And guess what the mini boss is? I mean, we're in a dungeon with ghosts, so it's going to be a ghost, right? It's not just one ghost, it's the two ghosts we fought earlier. Alright, in this room, the torches start outlets, but these guys are going to try and blow them all out. If they blow out all the torches, you have to start the dungeon over. So you want to kill them pretty quickly. Now, I kept my slingshot out because relighting the torches is easy with it, but if you're powered up like Ted is, they should pose no threat whatsoever. And we come to a stair maze, filled with riz whiz robes. Riz robes, yes, that's exactly what they are. 
Anyway, we can make our way down here and claim our awesome prize, which is... One ruby. Wow. Okay. How useless. Anyway, there's two other ways to go here. That, uh, one brings you to the boss door, which we can't go through yet, and the other brings you to the boss key, or to a way to get the key, which is up here. Yet another magnet puzzle, but you can cheese this one, too. With the rock's cape, we are also pretty unstoppable. So you pretty much avoided having to navigate all three of those by doing that fancy little jump there. Ted is an unstoppable killing machine! Alright, and yet another one of those kill everything in the room types. To grab a key. This key is going to allow us access to that room there to the east, but we have to make our way back around to get to it. Ooh, careful there, almost fell in the hole. That would not be good. Uh, I can't push that one. There we go. Oh, that looks like a fun puzzle down there. This room is full of water for no reason whatsoever. Okay, so, as you can see, there are three buttons. The statues next to them are one, two, and three. You can guess what to do. Hit them in sequential order, and don't fuck up like I just did. There we go. Hitting them in sequential order will open up this uh, jumping area here. If you mess up, you can always leave the room and start it over. No big deal. But it nets us yet another trampoline. To the ceiling! Alright, I'm getting my mystery seeds because I didn't quite remember how to solve this puzzle. And the owl tells you how. My right, below me red, my right red, only I shall shine blue. Okay, he's telling you how to manipulate these switches that are down these stairs. There are four switches, two on either side of the room. He said below me red to my right red, only I shall shine blue. So, that only leaves one option for the blue switch, and that's the top left corner. If you're thinking about it logically, of course. Look at that! Alright, so you could go up above and try to drop down, but it's fun just to skip. Skipping things! Sequence breaking is made so much easy with the cape. Wow, okay. This room is filled with the red and green Stolfos, which are both incredibly annoying. They jump away from you and throw bones at you. Plus, we have four torches shooting fireballs at us. Magic Boomerang, though, makes quick work of these guys. And we get the boss key! We're going to navigate this stair maze a little bit more now to make our way back down to the bottom. Which leads us to the boss door. It shouldn't be too hard to do this stair maze. If you end up getting lost, just keep walking in different stairs until you end up where you want to go. It's not that hard. Anyway, it's time for a boss. It's a two-headed dragon. Yet another throwback villain. He shoots uh, three different kinds of fireballs. One where they magically appear like so. One where it explodes into a burst and one that just kind of shoots at you. When you kill one head, the other starts flying around. When you kill both heads, it turns into a skeleton demon thing, which will charge at you and shake the room. Using the cape, though, to hover will keep it from being destroyed. And God damn, that ring is awesome. It makes short work of any boss. Anyway, we've got our heart piece. Time to collect our essence. What could it be? Why, it's the sacred nut sack, of course. I mean, the seed of life. Which could also... Okay, I'm just going to stop there. Alright, we've now collected seven essences. We only have one more to get. Maybe this tree will tell us exactly where it is. Somewhere, oh, that's helpful. Okay. Wow. So both Bill and Ted get the shaft in the end. We have to figure out where on earth the last essence is. So we're going to go searching for it next time. I'll see you then.